Hello there, and welcome back to our Let's Play of EU4 Common Sense as England for now. So, I um, have some good news and some bad news. I noticed that there was a bit of uh, audio stutter inside episode 1. That was because, or what I believe to be because, I use, uh, or I've been using um, MP4 video or format to record my videos. Uh, switching that over to AVI makes it better. The bad thing being, um, it'll take longer for me to release these videos, just given how AVI works. So, um, worrisome indeed from where we had last left off. We managed to form a coalition, or not a coalition necessarily, a personal union with France, making us in control of what hopefully what would be in control of the largest um, military might on the land on on mainland europe being france and on the seas being great britain so all well and good but the bad thing being that um that a lot of people are starting to go up against us in those coalitions, and as you can see here, uh, a lot of different factions are bringing against us with, uh, well, you know, plights of rebellion. So, with that said, um, I think we'll do, I think we've finished conquering for now, and we'll need to move into a game period of consolidation. So, we have, we have very strong leaders, I'm going to have to kind of lose one diplomatic, our power point per month just simply given the fact that i mean honestly there's not much i can do i want to hold on france but i also need my allies to keep the coalition at bay so we'll leave it at that and how this works out is that and I, I'll, I'll recover some manpower in the meantime because i really do need those people um how this works is that Countries can have the option of forming different uh, alliances against us in the form of a coalition. Uh, as the coalition kind of grows and grows, um, the coalition will declare war on us. And what that coalition does is then it will tr try to kind of take us down and split up our empire into different pieces. The bad thing is that they like coalitions can become immensely, immensely powerful. And the main thing is that we really need to kind of appease Austria over here. They need to, they're, they're kind of our crutch right now. We just don't have enough manpower to really uh, put out a fun, uh, a, a good fight. So you know what, I'll switch on over to um, another one of our people, uh, somebody, in, somebody with a, a boost to diplomatic reputation as our diplomacy uh, advisor. That way I hope I hope we can kind of influence a few of these people to go out of war. So Castel, aka Spain for the most part, is the biggest type of threat against us at the moment being. Um, I'm seeing whether or not we can perhaps maybe kind of quell the, the group of dissidents over here on mainland Europe, the people actually inside this coalition, but I doubt I'll have any luck with that. The main thing is that we need to recover more manpower, but we only gain about 200 men each turn. We need at least, you know, approximately, or approximately 25 or 32,000 men before our manpower pools are in any suitable condition. So we'll have to wait. So here we can talk a little bit about the... Uh, or is can we start a new debate firstly no uh that'll be five years okay fair enough um talking a little bit about how we can spend these different powers once again uh with the new expansion one of the things that comes up is the idea of um development for your provinces now um what you can do is that they've, re they've reduced they've removed the uh the traditional system of improving provinces and they've removed th they've re-implemented it with this idea of development so how it works is that each province has uh, a certain level of development in administration uh, diploma diplomacy and military power uh translating into direct tax income um production income and uh kind of manpower income so with that said each time you kind of tear up one of these provinces, I'm going to go to Yorksfordshire right away, tear up, say for example, um, military power. Um, it'll raise the cost of developing the province in all three areas by a fixed amount, and I think it's 5% each time. And what this war, or what this does is that it allows us to develop our country at, at the same time. It gives a, it kind of opens up the options as to, you know, where we, how, how do we want to kind of manage all of these improvements. So, with that said, yeah, it uh, it, incre it can increase by a fair amount, but right now I really would like to spend some amount of 
power in increasing our manpower pool. The thing is that currently, I mean, each time you bump up military manpower, it increases recruitment by about 100 people per year. Spread that around 12 months, it's not a lot. So with that said, I mean, that's that's kind of a thing that you just need to kind of do over time. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, it's kind of marginal gains though. So we'll see. Um, apparently the Lollards have won. We didn't manage to finish the siege in time, which is rather unfortunate. Uh, so now we apparently tolerate uh, Lollards. That is rather that is rather a bummer. But nevertheless, we finished the war with France. Um, that alone, I mean, if we can absorb France in the future, that alone I think is uh, is good for future prospects. Now, uh, <laughs> the only issue is that I don't think we'll be able to invade anyone for any time soon because, well, we just have so much aggressive expansion, which is, you know, a measure of exactly what it says, that um, it'll take, like, at least 50 years before that kind of whittles away. But with any luck, we'll be able to build up the army into a fighting force within that time, more than, than enough to uh, kind of quell many of that. And then we get to do uh, this portion of the game. So, um, in... A few of the expansions, one of the things that they added is the ability to control your subjects to more extent than, than in the past. So um, f so currently, we control France uh, as, by personal union, and with that said, we gain a small amount of their income. So currently, their liberty desire is at 100, meaning that they may decide to turn rebellious um, over... Yeah, so they may decide to turn rebellious. Um, what we can do to kind of quell them is that we can kind of, um, well, enable support for loyalists, which will lower that to some extent. Um, but I can also open up a few other sections here. Typically, you have a few more options, but it doesn't look like we can do too much more apart from lowering that down by 13%-ish. Um, given the modifiers over here. So with that said, the best option we have would be to increase our relative power um, with, with respect against them. So with that said, I'll try to build up our military over time. The bad thing being that since our manpower pool is already depleted, uh, we, we can't build any new units just simply because it's like, well, okay, you already don't have enough troops to field existing units. I mean, how are you gonna field more, right? So with that said, we'll have to wait some things out. Currently though, uh, evidently the Austrians have broken away their alliance with us. We're going to see whether or not we can, we're no, never mind. Or why are their units not in blue? Or ah, never mind. We still have their alliances. I was wondering why their uh, little icon backgrounds weren't in blue anymore, but uh, I remember that only comes up during wars now. So um, that is all well and good. So in the meantime, yeah, we just kind of sit here, we get one of our diplomats to maintain good relations with the French, at least to as well as best as we can. And with that said, we can also try to integrate France in due time, but um, that'll be 50 years in the future. Which in game terms isn't that much, but um, overall it might take us a bit of time to do that. Yeah, one of the things about AVY is, um, like right now, this has been 8 minutes, 20 so seconds, and already this is a gigabyte. Um, with MP4, it's just so much better. So let's see, uh, we can we have, we can we can choose to get a cardinal minister, if we do so we gain better missionary strength, gives us a little bit more papal influence, or we can gain tin prestige. I'm gonna go with the tin prestige at this point, because you know what, with the Lullards, uh, honestly you don't really have that much of a, a good chance at controlling the system very very well. Um, nevertheless, I mean you still do, it's just that it uh, it will play a less a lessened role inside our game for the time being, so we'll, we'll just let that go through, you know what? And currently, let's see, there's a lot of fort maintenance going on, that's why. Right, so we're gonna get rid of these forts in London and places again, more or less because it, it helps us shave a, a, a buck off of our, our expenditures, so we, we, so we can get a buck in income, which to me is, uh, is a huge deal early on inside the game. And to talk a little bit about the trade system inside the game, all of the different provinces inside the uh, the game produce different resources. We produce fish in Wessex over here. Uh, these goods trade at a certain price. I'm not really sure if there is actually a supply and demand type of thing going on in, inside the background of the game. But um, different products do indeed have different types of um, 
types of well costs there. So what happens with these different goods is they go into the trade network over here. Trade goods flow from um, place to place. The these colored zones on the map are different collection zones, if you will, for those goods. Um, goods inside those zones go into these trade hubs, aka these panels. And as these uh, trade panels kind of go on and on and on, um, you can take money outside out of these trade notes. Uh, you collect one at your home port and with your merchants, of which we have one in, Char uh, in Champagne and one in the North Sea. You can also collect with them. But counterintuitively, it's 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 better to just kind of keep two as Britain in the North Sea and in, in one other place for now, just to kind of get them to shi uh, siphon money into the English Channel here and to just kind of let the game do its own siphoning. So currently we control, uh, or rather we have 51 trade power inside this node, and that is modified by a few things. I think getting income inside the future will be very, very important, and so long as we control the vital port of Calais over here, we can designate that as a as a, as a a trade port, as a staple port, which will increase our trade power inside the region considerably, but it'll piss off Flanders and a few other places. We're going to en enact that. And uh, what that'll do is that that'll give us a bonus to a thing called mercantilism, which will also increase our trade income. So anyhow, we get more trade power and a tiny amount of trade income bonus there, but that'll increase over time. Right, so we'll marry off with, um, with Austria, Hungary, or not Austria, Hungary, just Austria for now for a bit. But I don't think we'll be able to do any more um, lower order kind of marriages for the next little while. Right, so France is at 73, they are declining uh, for the most part, so that is good for news for us. I think we, once again, we just kind of have to keep our post here, try to whittle out Castel out of the coalition against us, and once that kind of happens, I think things are more or less good. Now, more income would definitely be better at this point, but... Um, the only thing I can do for that, really, would be to build trade uh, ships were trade ships and trade um, trade buildings, which are very, very costly. So, uh, if I go down to buildings here, what I can do is that I can build a series of marketplaces, which would increase local trade power. Uh, with that said, currently, you know what? For 100 gold, that's not too bad. And what this panel tells us is that, so there are four building slots remaining inside the province, how much it would cost to build the uh, the thing, and then how much of a bonus we get. Most buildings give you a percentage in terms of uh, in terms of how much they help out. So with that said, it lists, it's quite handy in the sense that it lists exactly what um, percent it is. And counterintuitively, uh, one of our best trade ports, uh, as it happens to be, is part of France. So these tiles are still part of the English Channel. And with that said, I'll try to uh, build two there. From the looks of it, this is because um, over here and over here in London, these are two kind of center, uh, or, you know, center rivers. So we'll get two of them, which makes sense. This one leads into Paris. Um, the other one leads into, of course, uh, Oxfordshire and into the heart of uh, England. So not bad. Either way, those will take a year to build, we'll let them build up, we'll get our manpower reserves up, and with the additional trade income, I'm going to field some more active uh, forces, more or less, honestly, to try to match France over here, and to keep them under our, uh, under our grip for the next little bit. Oh, and that's right, how is our trade fleet doing? They are sailing around. If you if you guys remember, they took a few losses, um, given the uh, given given what has happened in the war. So with that said, they've uh, each and every single trade ship, I believe, yeah, they add two trade power um, to the node that they're currently patrolling around. So again, that adds some to our income. Um, by I think 1500, we we should or we might be able to boost this income up to, I want to say. Maybe, um, maybe a l like 11 ducats per month, which doesn't sound huge, but uh, that that is a lot. And let's see, Harold from Castel to tell us about the Iberian wedding, where among the possible options, they want to let us bind their destiny with ours. What does that do? I don't remember. Well, it doesn't take him out of the coalition from the looks of it. Or does it? Ah, 
I don't know about you guys. I don't see it there anymore. Wow, we've even, we've even managed to piss off the Swiss. Um, but yeah, I don't see it anymore, so that's good. That takes out a huge chunk of the Alliance's manpower. Right, in the meantime, let's invest in administrative technology level 4, which will open up the um, the the trade ideas, or the, an idea slot. So, um, with these idea slots, or as I was saying, with these idea slots, again, um, there's, there are, um, yeah, the the game the, like the game has gone to the point where it's it's quite cumbersome with all of the content so it takes a bit of time to load and yeah the video doesn't record during that time so um, now that we've unlocked the first idea slot um I you know I said we would where we might go with exploration as our first one but you know what uh, we might go with another one specifically I was thinking about do doing maybe something in military or something in administration going forwards. Um, so, you know what? In the future, I will open this to a vote. I think for now, the correct thing to do would be to maybe spec into administrative technology, seeing as how we're, I believe we are ahead of the times here. And with that said, if you're ahead of the times, it costs you a lot more. Alright, damn autosave, it also interrupts me there. Uh, but as I was saying, if you're ahead of the times, it'll also cost you a lot more to tech up in terms of technology. So with that said, currently I think we'll spec into administrative ideas, perhaps? We're... Maybe economic ideas, later on maybe expansion ideas. For now. And later on, I think I'll open um, this section of the game up for a vote. Well, you know what, we could go with innovation. The thing with economic ideas is that it would provide us with a lot of uh, much needed income, but then again, trade ideas I think does that better. So let's see, what should we do? Hmm. You know what? I think I will leave that open for a vote. Uh, so with that said, I mean, there's, there's not too much harm if I leave that open for now. And with that said, um, I think I'll give you guys a few options to pick from right now, and then you guys can vote inside the comment below, comments below, and then we can choose those in for episode 3. So, within administrative ideas, I would probably go for economic ideas, if we want to get a head start on kind of improving our nation, developing it, controlling inflation, which is really helpful, um, more tax, of course, really helpful, and stuff on uh, diplomat development costs, again, really, really helpful. Uh, expansion ideas would also be really good later on, and I stress that more or less because you kind of need to have exploration to be able to colonize, and a lot of the stuff focuses here on better colonization. Administration, I would say it's useful surely for the fact that it makes kind of conquering easier, but I mean that one's eh for now I think. Um, of course, we could go into exploration, but I mean, mind you, it's fairly early, but hey, you never know with a randomized new world. Trade ideas is also very, very useful, in my opinion. Adds a lot of stuff on, you know, how well we can steer trade, how much we can make off of that. Um, in terms of military ideas, we could go for something such as offensive, uh, aristocratic, or quality ideas there. Um, but for now, we'll close that off. I mean, hopefully, it's it's not too big of a deal. I, I would prefer it if if we were to uh, be able to give you guys the option to influence the Let's Play, so I think we'll leave that as is for now, and we'll start up a debate for, um, let's see, tax income. And with that said, we'll grant them some army concessions, some army support. We won't bribe somebody because I want to buy a few more trade ports, some navy concessions, and a minor concession there. And the reason I do that is because I typically forget to, uh, <laughs> I forget to give them the concessions later on, right? And then end up forgetting about them completely. So we'll do that. And we will go forth. So in the meantime, I can spend our power in in increasing the country's development. Right, so we can open up a screen like this, which kind of tells us where we can focus on development. And I'm just going to pick the, the minor places around here and there. And I'm going to try to spend uh, a fair amount of military power just to boost that up. And again, I really, really want to man a, uh, a nice reserve pool of manpower for now. So we'll do that. 
check up on our trade income, we earn 8.1 ducats um, per turn or per, per month. Very, very good. Go back to buildings, build another trade depot at the next best yeah best spot, which I believe will be here. And if I can buy one more, I would probably go over here on next. So this belongs to this trade node over here. Um, currently, we transport 0 0.3. That's not very much, but uh, if we can boost that up, that would be very helpful as well. So let's see. France is in the good books with us. Their liberties desire is just slightly higher than what we would like them to be. And with that said, I will split the, the army into two pieces here. We have more than enough income to build a few more regiments. So with that said, I'm going to build um, two. Oh, that's right. Later on, uh, we need to tear up in military technologies or lest we fall behind. But um, I will. I will uh, build up some reserves again, just to make sure our relative power is higher. So I'm from from what I remember, we we, we have a we have a, there's, there's a historical event that allies Castel to us. So with that said, I'm not really sure how it plays out if they do choose that option, but um, it's there and it's, you know, something that we should be notable, note, note, noteful of, uh, but we'll see. Currently, let's see. Yeah. Um, doesn't look like we'll be able to swing them over to our side anytime soon um, in terms of liberty desire. But we'll be able to keep them at bay for now. Unhappiness amongst the clergy, we will gain some prestige because I don't think we're playing the Palpacy game anymore. Moscovy Trade Company, we gain some sort of, yeah, we gain, um, we gain a presence in the White Sea, which I believe is... Baltic CA, Novograd. Yeah, it's over here. We so we gain a we gain a fair amount of presence over here, and then we get to transfer some points to the North Sea, which in turn will be transferred into our trade hub. So we earn 855 ducats now, which is decently sizable. But yeah, I think for the most part, I uh, I run the clock over here for a bit of time. That way, um, the world kind of cools down from our recent conquests. And I'm just going to take a look at uh, how well or what our chances of absorbing, say, France would be. Zero percent, okay. Requirements for continued union, having a positive prestige, and having a positive relation with them. So that's not too bad. Invest in new tech. We'll grab one level of uh, diplomatic tech. Add some minor bonuses that we don't necessarily care for right now. Later on, that'll be important, though. Military tech, we'll need to save up some points and kind of spec into that. Right. So in the meantime, I could spend our administrative tech on um, a few levels of this war. Typically, what I would do is I would buy one level inside administrative technology or uh, administrative ideas and to go from there. But for now, I think what we'll do here is we'll boost up taxation. You know what? In London, especially Kent to some extent. Um, you know what? Over here as well. Over here as well. And one of the things that you may have noticed is that, uh, and I, I should have zoomed in for this, but the little uh, towns on the map, they actually grow when you boost up the, um, well, yeah, the 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 taxation on the map so currently we're earning about six coins per turn really really good and we're starting to collect a lot more from the english channel i'm guessing this is because the blockade uh definitely stops the uh a lot of the ports over here from doing their thing so this is temporary this is this is temporary Right, and because it is temporary, I will counterintuitively buy a small force of third of three thousand men just again because we have the ability to. And um, nevertheless, the development changes will hopefully allow us to be able to sustain these uh, these troops. And again, I want to be able to fend off that coalition 
hopefully with the support of France in, in at the same time. So yeah. And again, we need to keep prestige high, but so long as we have James Suffolk over there, he uh, he holds the prestige decay back. Um, so the best thing would be to probably join in with a, with one of our allies in a war and to kind of throw your army around. And again, it's um, it'll it'll cost us in terms of the, the home front security and fending off that alliance. But within a few years, um, ideally that'll pass. So in 1470 is when I think I'll be able to make bigger moves. Uh, so like I, I could start say a war with uh, Scotland, try to conquer them and vassalize them in the future. But again, or but again, um, that'll draw troops away from the home front uh, or on the on the on the European front. And with that said, that opens up the uh, us to a coalition for us. Yeah. So there we go. People are starting to leave that coalition against us. Ah, there we go. Perfect. So this is the, the type of thing that I want to see. Um, we can join in to some minor wars and we can ship a portion of our forces over there to help them out. And as we kind of do that, that will allow us to um, build up some prestige from fighting battles and from helping allies out. And that will hopefully allow us to be able to um, keep our prestige high because we do need to uh, have it as a positive thing and damn we weren't able to fulfill that mission in time eh? in that case I think we'll just do uh, you know what I think we'll try to I don't know if we'll be able to finish the one uh, in terms of improving our prestige so we'll try to repair our relations with Lannister over here so you know what, we'll come over here, we will grab the diplomat from Spain because they no longer pose a threat. Send them over here just to kind of complete that mission. Um, and we might try to guarantee them from the Irish because that would, that they are, um, if it, it's, it's kind of a good thing if Ireland is, is one big piece because that would imply that we would be able to, unfortunately I can't accept this, um, because that would imply we'll be able to conquer one big nation instead of a whole bunch of small uh, pieces there for an added bonus. And over time, the uh, the Empire of the Holy Roman Empire, will, or the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, will pass a few reforms and all that. We'll just let that go. For now, we'll take some land from them. And over here, we'll wait until uh, the Castellians and people land on mainland Europe, fight with them, try to win a few more battles, and grab some prestige like that. And let's see, back on the home front, I think I will... Mm, this might be a little res reckless, but... Uh, you know what, I will spend some money on building a trade port. I should have built one in Vesex first, but um, you know what, that's fine. I thought I had money for two, but no, we're, we're slightly short on it. Either way, uh, this blockade will, will give us a small amount of income. It won't pay for the fleet, mind you, but it will help. Uh, gain base tax or lose prestige. We will gain pres base tax and lose a bit of legitimacy. That'll heal up, though. Prestige hour, we need to keep in the positives. The good thing is that it decays in proportion to the uh, the value that, uh, or the, in, in proportion to our value. So as it gets smaller and smaller, um, the decay will get smaller and smaller. Bad thing is that still we need to keep it positive. Okay, so we're just waiting until the uh, Spanish finish their finishes their thing there. Uh oh. Oh, that. Ah, I forgot about that. We're too far away from our ports. Yeah, if I didn't catch it there, that would have been really, really bad, or else that would have sunk on our ships. Luckily, the transport ships can last slightly longer. But, ah. It doesn't matter if we're right near our allies, they don't actually provide logistical support. So, with that said, um, that does. that Our, our ships take damage because of that. 
Okay, and it would seem as though things are starting to wrap up here. We're still fight in the fight against Morocco, so... What I would like to see is some movement across the border over here by one of these two countries. I will have to rebuild our, uh, our one, one uh, heavy ship, but in the meantime, let's grab another marketplace. How is our fleet doing? Really, really bad. I would have really liked to participate in uh, this little naval battle, but nope, can't do that. How are the ships? Still not fully healed, but uh, not bad. Now, I wonder if we can coordinate with them. I would really like it to uh, to get some, some of the Castel and Portuguese forces onto Moroccan soil. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah, we can grab Port Pike Square over here. That'll open up some more, uh, or that'll open up the military sections to us. And let's see, absenteeism or parliamentary traditions. We gain some prestige, or not prestige, but legitimacy good enough. Absenteeism. Given the great influence of the over politics of the country, it would be easy to assume all MPs attend, but unfortunately they do not. So, <laughs> so the irony being, we gain, uh, you know, some legitimacy for these traditions, and at the same time, we, uh, well, we can, well, we face uh, some changes on the home front. So evidently, um, so yeah, sometimes events will come up uh, with respect to your, your, your different um, holdings on this front. So with absenteeism, um, people, we, for, for the, like, if we can, if we try to force people to attend, some of these people will try to oppose our current debate. So you know what, here, I'm going to take the loss in... In prestige because currently we do gain some over time um, and with that said the K isn't that bad so we'll, so yeah we'll do that as it turns out I think James Suffolk over here keeps uh, us in, in in the debate for, for a good amount of time so that's not too bad uh, right so 85% chance to pass unfortunately it doesn't pass so we'll go with something else Ooh, peasants war in Madrid we won't reach that in time. It would have been nice if we were able to help him out. Oh, no. A prestige dipped into the negatives there. Ah, this is good. So, Austria will be calling us on for, for a fight. We will join them and we will send the expeditionary force to help him out shortly. Um, but for now, I think this will be the end of the episode. Unfortunately, it is rather uh, uneventful, but um, you know, be sure to tell me in the comments below what idea group you would like. You can find a full complete listing of these ideas in the EU4 wiki. And uh, well, you know, if you haven't done so, be sure to subscribe to the channel, as of course that'll keep you informed about the series. Next time, uh, we hope to see the fighting for the Austrian Contra Conquest campaign over here. So, bye bye till then.